Okay, I damix ganata ni nix oko ex. The danako natsik bama dosin. The mochto to sixigat sitibi begani gaina sixiga. Hello, my name is Matthew Provost, and I'm from Treaty 7 territory, which is considered Blackfoot territory. Gitsiksi matsitsi kakait, Musqueam skohomish slay with tooth kakwitlam katesi. Gitsiksi matsitsi chief rondalermi. I want to acknowledge that I am an uninvited guest on these unceded and unsurrendered traditional territories. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to feel as though you are in two worlds? Today, I want to share with you my experience being in two worlds. And while sharing my story, I ask that you are here today with an open heart and an open mind. This is not just my story, but a collective truth into the experiences of indigenous peoples navigating the education system. Living in two worlds looks like showing up to class, knowing you will have to defend indigenous content, indigenous experiences, and yourself. Living in two worlds looks like sitting in lecture instead of attending ceremony or saying goodbye to someone you love because you were denied this request to go home. Living in two worlds looks like having to endure racism and ignorance in your learning environments. As we all know, the Edask City Matsdokyop, the university education, has the opportunity to give us an abundance of awareness to be critical and to help us bloom. For indigenous peoples, we understand education as the tool that drove assimilation practices across so-called Canada through the Indian residential school system. There were 139 of these schools in operation from 1831 to 1996. My relationship with education started before I was even born. My parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents are all survivors of this system. One generation out and four generations deep, 95. And the last residential school closed in 1996. At 26 years old, I am one generation out of the residential school system. I may not have had the choice to where my relationship with education started, but I'm here today to rewrite where my relationship with education will go. Today, I'm in my final semester, and I'll be graduating with a bachelor's degree in Indigenous Studies, focusing on public policy and minoring in communications. My relationship with education is complex, and my experience as an Indigenous student has been exhausting. I've had to face many institutional barriers while also combating racism and oppression. My journey into post-secondary has forced me to become resilient. It has made me question my own capabilities, pushed my boundaries, continuously recognize my own trauma, and exert hours of emotional labor. In my first year, I remember sitting in class while a professor discussed the various impacts that the residential school is having on Indigenous peoples. And I remember exactly how I felt in that moment. My chest felt heavy, and waves of anxiety clouded my head, and I felt sick to my stomach. And this was the first time of many that I have had to walk out of a classroom. This was the feeling of being traumatized and re-traumatized in my learning environment. while also being a full-time student. I have fought to sit on numerous university committees regarding reconciliation, Indigenous student concerns, and Indigenous student spaces on campus. My time in post-secondary has made me realize that even institutions such as Simon Fraser University have a lot more work to do in areas of reconciliation, equity, diversity, and inclusion. I have seen firsthand the systemic and colonial barriers that make it difficult for not only Indigenous students to feel safe, but supported and recognized in these decision-making spaces. As an Indigenous student, you are not just a student. You are constantly recognizing where supports are needed at your own expense and advocating for them at the same time. 
if our indigenous, if our academic institutions believe they are furthering reconciliation efforts, then how come indigenous students have to advocate to be a part of reconciliation efforts? I have seen firsthand a lot of these barriers and indigenous students are always put on the front lines of combating racism in their classrooms, as well as learning and being able to relate to the content that is taught in our classrooms. I acknowledge that it is a privilege to walk in two worlds. The opportunity to walk in two worlds discusses the ability to see and participate in the world around you from different perspectives. Many indigenous academics discuss this topic as living in two worlds or as Linda Two-Way Smith states, two-eyed seeing. To explain this a little bit further, it is almost like you are able to see and participate in the world around you from different perspectives. As an indigenous person, I see the world through a Western colonial lens which has been imposed. But I also acknowledge my Siksigaitse to be my Blackfoot worldview. To explain this, it's almost like you speak two languages, and one language you speak at specific times and places, like at school or at work. But you may also speak your second language when you're with friends and family. You're able to navigate these different spaces when you need to. As Indigenous students, we are constantly put on the front lines of trying to navigate these two worlds. One side of this being connected to Ksakhkom, community, our land, and protocols. The other side of this is having to be in spaces where your experiences are not considered. I wanted to be here today to share with you all, not only to address the systemic barriers and issues that we face, to, but, but to acknowledge that when Indigenous students make the decision to further their education, it is so much more than that. It is so important to uphold, amplify, and support Indigenous student voices. Picture a room full of Indigenous students discussing the daily barriers they face and draining encounters they've had that week. This happens more often than not. Sometimes, as Indigenous students, we feel as though we are teaching the class more than we are learning, being put on the spot to discuss, teach, and correct information on Indigenous theory, Indigenous knowledge, Indigenous sovereignty, and Indigenous social justice issues. The difference here is, Everybody learns this in class or for a semester, and that's where it stays. I am unable to do this. My peers can't and my family can't. I am unable to separate myself from my history and lived experience. What is being taught is about me, my family, and my community. Justice Murray Sinclair, the chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission said, education got us into this mess, and education will get us out of it. I want to acknowledge that even though I've had to face many barriers, I've also found community support and exceeded my own expectations to what I thought my own capabilities were. I wanted to be here today to share with you all, to acknowledge and listen to Indigenous student voices. And I think that's so essential in furthering reconciliation efforts. I have some calls to action to address here. And I hope that you can use this not only on an individual level, but in any space that you occupy moving forward. For students, be mindful of the questions that you ask in your classrooms and the content that you read. Ask your professors or departments why you don't have Indigenous content, but also be thankful if you already do have Indigenous content in your classes, because the institution was not made to incorporate Indigenous forms of knowledge. Many Indigenous people in academia prior to that have fought to have that included in your course material. If you are a professor, don't just teach Indigenous themed content because it fits in your course. Teach it because it'll bring a new perspective to your classroom. Better yet, 
invite indigenous community members to your classes. And also, if there are indigenous students in your classes, be mindful, because the content that you teach could be their experience. Provide trigger warnings, and also culturally competent resources and supports. For everyone here, we all have a commitment to recognizing that systemic racism, oppression, and colonialism are still prevalent in our learning environments. We have the opportunity to change this experience. Academia is critical, intuitive, and allows us to broaden our understanding of how we want to be in this world. This is not just my story, but many other Indigenous student stories. There are 97 universities across so-called Canada, and there are Indigenous students experiencing what I have shared with you at most, if not all of them. I do not have all the answers to fix systemic barriers for Indigenous students, but what I do know is that Indigenous student voices are essential to reconciliation efforts in any academic setting. We deserve to learn in safe environments. We deserve to have culturally competent support and curricula. And most importantly, we deserve to be heard. And for Indigenous students hearing this, I want you to know that I and many other people in your families and communities have acknowledged all the work that you've put into further your education. I acknowledge and understand how difficult it can be to navigate these institutions on many levels. And your presence in these institutions is so essential to making change. Your experience is valid. Igakimat, try hard. I was once told that creator wouldn't give you things you couldn't handle. So I leave that with you today. Thank you.